Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Khushamdeed, Khuya Morikha Ji, Ayanu, Pakhair, Ragale, Washmale, Junashume. Welcome, a very warm welcome to World This Morning with Shasa Hashmi, ladies and gentlemen. I love sharing my mornings with you. That is because you guys have been lately giving such a huge response to our show. And you guys are the reason that we are motivated every day, early morning, to come together, all of the team to come together and create a show for you, inform you, educate you, and also entertain you early in the morning. And that is why you guys make me feel motivated. And should I tell you, I was never a morning person. But because of this show and because of sharing my mornings with you, my knowledge with you, and all my amazing guests with you. I'm a morning person now. I absolutely love waking up early in the morning and then coming to you and speaking to you as well. And speaking about the weather, well, it's so confusing lately. To be honest, one day I feel like it's already summer officially. And just the other day, it's so cold, I feel like I need to turn my heater on again. But it's going to be cold and dry in most parts of the country today and even tomorrow. But let's see when officially summer starts because we are enjoying the spring, right? Uh, this very interesting news I came across two days ago, or one day ago, I'm not really sure, just yesterday I read it. So there's this French designer called Christian Louboutin, I'm pretty sure all of the ladies especially know him out there. So he created a shoe, it's called Imran Chappal, and the shoe is inspired by our Prime Minister Imran Khan because he wears a Peshawari Chappal, uh, especially that specific kind of Peshawari Chappal is called uh, Kaptan uh, Kheri, if I'm not really wrong, because one of my researchers told me so, and I'm pretty sure he's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this shoe that Louboutin has created, it has a red sole because all shoes that Louboutin creates has red soles, but it's more or less like a Peshawari Chappal with stud, uh, studs on it. It is you know, extremely bedazzled, and that sort of represents the Pakistani culture, named even after our Prime Minister. It's so amazing to see that this is not the first time people are sort of stealing our culture. I mean, there has been truck art on buses in London and other parts of the world as well. Kola Puri Chapur from Pakistan is also pretty famous around the globe, so this time it's very exciting as well. So what are we talking about today? Well, this is going to be super, super exciting because this time, my guests are so tiny, but they are so energetic, so motivational, so inspirational, even for me. Before I give it away, we have some pictures we need to share with you. Let's take a look at these, and then we shall introduce them to you. Well, this happens to be a super kid. He has his own show. He is an RJ, and just so young at this age, he's been interviewing so many people doing his own show, and he... It, you know, it's sort of a permanent job for him. He claims that it is government job. So he's, he's a student, he goes to school, he has a job. And then we also have his friend who happens to be a co-host sometimes at his own show. And he also happens to be a motivational speaker. So I feel like we need to introduce them without further ado. These are the super kids. I will ask them to introduce them to you, but I need to, you know, of course, take the names. On my right hand side, we've been joined by someone who happens to be small in size, but full of energy. And he is so inspirational. You guys really need to stay tuned to watch this. This is Mohammed Hasnan, who happens to be an RJ and also a student. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm feeling good. And how do you feel being in Islamabad? Because you belong to Khaybar Pakhtunkha, right? Yeah. Okay, great. And next to Mohammed Hasnan, we have, as I've already mentioned, one of his friends. Sometimes happens to be a co-host. He is also a motivational speaker at such a small age. He happens to be Mohammed Samid, also a student. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And next to Samid, we have someone. Well, he happens to be Samid's father. This is Mohammed Saeed. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show, sir. Um, and we will be speaking to him about how the journey of Samid and also Hasnan started because you know both of them, right? Okay, so let's begin with Hasnan. How old are you? Introduce yourself to us because I just told your name right. This so such a long introduction to you. Just go ahead. Okay, I'm just six years old. I read in class one. I'm gonna promote in class two. Wow. And also I'm working in radio and I'm having um, shows on radios and I'm having going to academy also wow. and also to school. Mm, that is very interesting. Okay, Samid, what about you? I'm studying in the name of Almighty Allah. First of all, Assalamu alaikum uh, to the dear viewers and I'm very thankful uh, to you and uh, PT World Management uh, for inviting me to this show. I'm Mohammed Samid and I'm getting home education at uh, Beacon International Educational System. And I'm a uh, student of Super Kid program at the University of Spoken English and Computer Sciences. I am living in Peshawar. Okay. Basically, I belong from Kohat and I'm uh, 
um, Bangladesh family. I'm from Bangladesh okay. family. Wow, very nice. That was such a sweet introduction, both of you. Um, Mr. Saiz, we should be coming to you about the journey and everything, but I really need to start my discussion with these two. I love, yeah, I please. absolutely enjoy speaking to them. Yes. So, Hasnan, when did you start your show? You're six now. So, how long ago did you start your show? I was four years old. Oh, and wow. Yeah, I was <laughs> born to a small show just for a try. Okay. When I get there, no one was trying to talk. There were 10 years old kids. There were many big kids, but they can't talk. And I talk just one hour. And no one was just trying to talk. Hmm. And also the... Uh, which was the journalist you can't talk also really yeah so they were journalists and they were kids who were 10 years of age and even elder than that and you were the one who they selected and you were only four years that is amazing so what was the audition what did they ask you for the audition it was not audition it was just like a guest i was small kid i was a guest first of all then they give me a show by the name of nea abe Okay. It was also a show. I was sitting. I have eight episodes in that. Oh, wow. After this, all things, there was a show by the name of Super Kid where was Sir Hamad Safi. I, wo I was watching his videos. He motivated me okay. from his videos and I just take admission in the Super Kid class. Oh, wow. So nowadays, Sir Hamad Safi is also my friend and also my teacher. <laughs> okay. So he often comes on your show now. Yes. Your Sir Sir Hamad often comes on your yeah, show now. He He's was a regular. my first guest in my oh. radio show. Okay, and before the show, you also mentioned that he is your favorite guest, right? Yeah. Why is that so? Because he is my teacher. In between him, the all fair gets off from me <laughs> when I'm between in him. Okay, perfect. So, Samit, tell me, you've been to uh, uh, his show, right, Super Kids? Mm -hmm. How was your experience, and who has been your favorite guest? Mm, um, mine one is so uh, Snan because he's my friend, and okay. uh, I like him, and he's a, a very uh, jokey. He a kid. He's very kidding with me. So okay. I love so you him. guys are always making jokes and you know having fun all the time, right? Yeah. Do you have a joke that you want to share with us yeah. early in the morning? Because everyone should smile and laugh early in the morning, yeah. right? I'm having one question. Uh, how will you make seven uh, even number? Seven an even number. Yeah. I have no idea how we can do that. You will uh, just um, uh, remove that S so. Even will be left. Oh. So <laughs> okay, that makes perfect sense. So how can you make seven an even number? Just remove the S and it's even. That was perfect. Hasnan, do you have a joke you want to share with us? Or any funny story or incident that you had on your show? Anything? Mm, I have a journal question. Oh, okay. Well, this is going to be hard. I'm already scared. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Samit, you know that, but I don't yeah. let you to get... if. They don't know, so you can't tell. Okay, you can't okay. tell, okay? What I'm going to guess. Is, uh, why do people call butterfly butterfly? What is the reason why? <laughs> okay, this is genuinely a very hard question. People call butterflies butterflies because, I don't know, they can fly. You tell me. Okay, butterflies. Because... Butter gets on hand like it's so much sticky. Sticky, it's, yes. Yeah. So when the uh, butterflies get the all color from the uh, flowers, they hmm. put it in their own on flies. their wings. So when we touch their flies, so it the colors come in our hands. Sticks hand. in our oh yeah. right. Yeah. Then we wash it, so it goes. Thank you so much for informing me, Hasnain. I didn't know that. So Hasnain says over here, butterfly is called a butterfly because like butter is very sticky, their wings are sticky and whenever they go to flowers, they catch their colors. And when we touch the butterfl uh, butterflies, we catch their color on our hands, right? Okay, perfect. Now, you guys need to hold on just a little bit because I need to talk to Mr. Said over here. <laughs> yeah. Sir, when was it that you realized that your son is actually such a great speaker and you need to sort of, you know, send him an exp uh, so that he could explore himself? Yeah, actually, ma'am, in our province, yes, this has been started. Sir Hamad Safi. Okay. Actually, yes, he is Hamad Safi for me. He is a little kid. Okay. So he is the sir of these kids. Right. When first I observed him on the TV, hmm. 
So I decided that first my kid must meet with him hmm. and then we will decide that how he is going. Okay. So they have a platform, they have proper analysis that University of Spoken English and Computer Sciences wow. by the name. They have expertise in this thing. Okay. So they have started that super kid when I took Mr. Sami there. So they analyzed and they told me that, yeah, mashallah, he is genius okay. like Hasnan and Hamad, so he can do like them. On that occasion, one of their teachers, Sir Akbar Shah Khilji, okay. he told them that Samit, believe in yourself that mm. I can do. So uh, he is believing from there. He met uh, to Hamad in February uh, 2018. Okay, within last year? Yeah. Wow. So within one year, he has achieved so much. That, mashallah, mashallah, uh, that is great. Yeah. So do you train him or anything? No, actually, uh, he is going to school and then he is going to University of Spoken English and Computer Sciences, right. particularly there. And they are working on the personality of the kids. That is just Whatever he things. is now, whatever the kids are now, hmm. so that credit I am giving to the University of Spoken English and Computer Sciences and the role model is definitely well, that's Sazi. really that's really modest of you yeah. to actually say that but definitely you know kids learn a lot from their families and their parents yes. as well because most of the time they are spending the time with their families so whatever impact your personality has on him that is what he's developing thank you so much for being with thank us sir you. we will yeah. be in conversation with these two amazing yeah, kids but please, right yeah. now we're headed out to a short break because when we come back we will be joined by yet another amazing super kid so stay tuned good morning Magla Hills, the heaven of Islamabad, the abode of God, a place where you can explore your soul and meet power of natural elegance of mountains. Spread over an area of 12,605 hectares, the Magla Range, the foothills of Himalayas, are youngest hills with an age of 5,000 years old. Magla Hills are home to around 600 plant species, 250 bird varieties, 38 mammals and 13 species of reptile. Magla Range is characterized by many valleys, scenic spots and beautiful water streams, especially in the monsoon months. Famous for their tranquil environment and lush green natural splendor, Magla Hills are a particular source of pride, harmony and spiritual solace. For the residents of Islamabad, many of whom make it a weekly ritual to scale the various trails to Dominico and Pir Suhawa. Magla Hills send up its visitors with lasting trail of memories to relish in solitude and provide an escape from the relentless rhythm of life.
Welcome back to Well This Morning with Shaza Hashmi. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been watching the first part of the show, you know we are in conversation with some amazing super kids over here who are actually so much better than I am at this spoken. I mean, just before the show, I asked them if, if they would be able to, you know, speak in English. And they said, we know three languages, ma'am. And, you know, it was stunning because actually they know four languages, Chinese and Pashto, along with Urdu and English, which is absolutely amazing. But right now we've been joined by someone who happens to be almost along the same lines of age, like Hasnan and Samid over here. But she's been on the show before. She's a superstar. She's a singer. She happens to be Iman Ali Abbasi. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Wa show. Wa salam. Um, my name is Iman Ali Abbasi. I'm 11 years old. Okay. I study in Lahore Grammar School. I belong to Murray hmm. and I came and back to PTV. Yes, you've been here before. So Iman, you've won quite some you know, medals and cups as well. And out of 1,700 ki kids from all over the country, you were the finalist who made it to Amsterdam for an international yes. competition. That is absolutely amazing. So just to give it an amazing touch early in the morning as well, we need you to start the show with a song. Can you do it? Sure, don't or do it English first. Whatever you feel comfortable with. आओ बच्चों से कहो तुमको पाकिस्तान की जिसके खातिर हमने दी कुर्बानी लाखों जान की पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद हम जिंदा कौम हैं पाइंदा कौम हैं हम जिंदा कौम हैं पाइंदा कौम हैं हम सब की है पहचान हम सब का पाकिस्तान 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 हम सब का पाकिस्तान हर दिल की उफक पर है चांद एक सितारा है 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 कलमा भी वाहिद परचम भी हमारा है हर दिल की उफक पर है चांद एक सितारा है है कलमा भी वाहिद परचम भी हमारा है हम यक दिल हम यक जान हम यक दिल हम यक जान हम जिंदा कौम हैं पाइंदा कौम हैं हम जिंदा कौम हैं पाइंदा कौम हैं हम सब की है पहचान हम सब का पाकिस्तान 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 Hum sab ka Pakistan. Wow, Iman, this was absolutely great. I remember Thank last you. time when you came, you sang some English songs. So yes. when we are closing the show, I'll ask you for an English song, okay? So, you know, these two happen to be, they are hosts and they have a radio show to themselves, which is absolutely amazing, right? So it is really, really great to see all of you together. But okay, Hasnan, coming back to you, since you are a celebrity now in Peshawar, both of you, how is your life different, I mean, inside and outside home? I'm just like a normal kid. Okay. Because I'm watching cartoon in English in Urdu. Okay. These kind of cartoons I'm watching. So that's not a big deal if I'm <laughs> a big kid or what. I just just work, work, work. It's not a big deal. Oh wow, okay. Kids has to all do also the social work, the games also. Okay. And also the study, not just games. Okay. So in home, I'm just so much energetic and I'm just playing, I'm just getting upside down and... <laughs> and doing all, all fun activities. Yeah. Okay, so Hasnan over here really feels like he's a normal kid, of course, like any other person. He does not feel like a celebrity at home. And he feels like being a kid is so much responsibility because you don't only have to study, you have to play as well. You have to do fun activities as well, which is absolutely great. What about you, Samid? Is your life any different from inside and outside home? Um, inside a home, I'm like a normal kid. Mm -hmm. um, I watch the TV, I, <laughs> I play cricket with my brother, I play football with my brother. Okay. Uh, I um, uh, I play my <laughs> lab. Uh, I'm having my lab top, uh, so um, uh, I uh, do my work uh, there. Um, I make a PowerPoint presentation. Wow. I uh, I learn uh, from my uh, laptop, and uh, in home I watch the news. I watch the cartoons. That is brilliant. And you guys are actually inspiration for a lot of Pakistanis out there. Because I'll be honest, and this is sort of confession, um, you know, being 
I don't know, I can't say being a Pakistani nation, but most of us really do this. We're lethargic, we're lazy people, we just need shortcuts, we need to reach the goal without even working for it. And these kids are here to prove that you really do need to work for it in order to achieve whatever you want. So Iman, what are your future goals? Do you plan on being a professional singer? Yeah, I think so, but I want to be an engineer. That is brilliant. So what or you can pilot. do, you can study to be an engineer. And once you do have the degree, you can just sing because you're already so good at it, right? So do you learn I from your I won't stop. Oh, you should not. You should not. I won't so stop. do your parents sing? Sometimes. Sometimes. Do they inspire you? My mother's you? a good singer. Oh, wow. So you guys sing together as well, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Have she you watched the movie Frozen? Learn. Yes. So there's this song of, I'm not... Snow. It's my favorite from five years. Right? Let it go, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Vikas. So mother and daughters often do sing that song. Do you do as well? Not that much. Okay. Uh, in olden times. In olden times. Okay. Now you do have some new playlists, of course. Yes. Okay, so you know, um, this program that you guys have, Sameed and Hasnan, this training session that you have in Peshawar, we don't usually have here in Islamabad or even different parts of the country. So you are absolutely lucky to, first of all, have such a mentor who is mentoring you to do all of this and then have a show as well. You do go to different places and speak to people, you know, motivational speaking about education, about health and everything. Uh, tell me about any one of those times that you went to speak to people. How was it? First of all, there were two um, shows um, ever, ever ha um, good um, happened to me. Okay. One was of Bulair, Okay. and it was also my first time. It was after yesterday. Okay. Uh, I have gone Bulair. It was my first time, so it was so much fun. Right. And so what did you speak about? And the other one was in Lahore. Hmm. Wow. So how was the crowd? Were there a lot of people? Yeah. I Were you scared? Experts. Nope. Wow, that is brilliant. So what did you speak about? Education or what? I just speak about also in education and also a little bit fun, these things. So you were making jokes and just engaging people over there. Okay. Samit, are you scared of crowds? I mean, because when I was little, I'll be very honest, when I was your age, first of all, I was not an achiever like you guys are, mashallah. But whenever I did see a crowd, I had stage fright. I was not very confident to speak. Are you very confident in front of people as well? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm not scared in the front of uh, the people. Wow. So have you I done like motivational that. speaking for a yeah. crowd? What yeah. was it about? Tell me about it. Uh, to being a good citizen. And, and what, what like should we learn? How can we be a good citizen? Uh, we must clean our streets. If we clean our streets, uh, hmm. so, uh, so that will be a good uh, thing, a good citizen. Uh, do, uh, that we must, um, we must not uh, tease uh, hmm. our neighbors. Right. We must um, not uh, broke, uh, break our... Uh, lights of our streets is hmm. if uh, there is a hole and a person uh, who is coming he do not see that and the lights are broke and the lights are not working if, if his uh, foot uh, hmm. uh, feet uh, good uh, there uh, so he will be a uh, fall uh, so he will be injured so we must not do that Oh, okay, that's perfect. That was so nice of you to actually inform everyone about that. But Iman, you know, you three, as I've already mentioned, you guys are already, you know, you have started to achieve your goals for your future life. But there are a lot of students out there who need to seek inspiration from you. I mean, how can they change their lifestyle, first of all, other than studies? Because it is very healthy to do things other than studies, co-curricular activities like you do. How can they do that? How can they do that? How like can they incorporate fun activities in their life, not just study, because it they does get boring, right? They have to be themselves. Right? They, their parents should let them go, play with their friends, go on the streets. Hmm. They should express themselves more widely, be social, be socialized. I'm um, not only studying, just call kitabi kira kehte. Right, kitabi kira. Some parents force forms. their <laughs> kids to be like that, but kids are not meant to be like that. Oh, okay, okay. So you also do know a Spanish song, if I'm not yes. wrong. Oh my God. So you know what? We're doing a little sort of a change over here. We're not going to ask her to sing an English song. You are indeed, in fact, going to sing a Spanish song. But before that, you know Chinese? Both of you do know Chinese? Yes. Oh, perfect. Can you say something for me in Chinese? Nigo. Why now? Okay. Uh, is this a conversation? What does this mean? Ni hao ma means that how are, how are you? you? And wo hin hao means that I'm fine. She she mean no, that thank you. No, I don't say ni hao ma. Ni hao means hello, not 
how are you niho ma you have to make ma also at that so then it will be how are you okay so niho ma means how are you yeah. and only niho means hey hello hello okay wow that is great so this language is do you plan on learning other languages too because you already do yeah. know four yeah. languages that is great um uh, yeah. i'm uh, learning arabic i want to learn arabic too i'm also learning arabic okay and do you see that probably 5 years or even 2 years because you guys are so smart 2 years later you will be fluent in chinese like you are fluent in english and urdu do you think so yeah, yeah. inshallah we will be but i'm inshallah. little bit kind of um, my mouth is little bit that sometimes close close type of <laughs> so you feel like you can mo- not make the right enunciation of chinese words no, that's okay you can learn in english But oh, when okay. my mm, people listen my the real English how do I speak in my university they are just seeing me and saying wow wow i'm i'm seeing you and saying wow so that is you know absolutely no surprise if people say wow when you look at when they look at you iman do you plan on learning any other languages yeah i know spanish i'm learning arabic oh wow and i go to i want to learn like um chinese as well chinese is very important because to be honest when we do look at the future now in london <laughs> yes the signboards yeah, also the have sheep. chinese written below the english oh in london they do yes wow so probably we can have that in pakistan yeah. as well right so we yeah. should learn chinese after you were saying something yeah, about the seats that is also there after cpac there will be many chinese the pustun will be not that much okay after cpac right so, so that's you... why people have to learn chinese to interact with them right yeah because there will be many people chinese okay I- iman i'm sorry you were saying but something I, got you off but oh. i don't like chinese I people i think pakistan are... and chinese will combine after 5 or 6 years like we will have the same thing okay we better learn chinese <laughs> yes of course i mean what you mean to say is that we will have a lot of interaction and people to people contacts in the future but chinese so definitely is we not do that need hard. To... it's not that hard really What? There is a thing in Chinese people they are peaceful. Okay. But there is a thing they eat very much uh, kind of bad things gross like <laughs> grown gross food hmm. hamburgers and insects like yeah, cockroaches insects cockroaches and yes. hot dog. <laughs> yes. Right. Especially so of course. It's the uh, meat of dogs. <laughs> really? Okay, so it's actually a sort of another kind of meat, but yes, you're absolutely true. We cannot adopt these things of them. So what we can learn from them is the language that you guys are already doing, but yeah, not the food. We the love peace. our food, right? Yes. <laughs> and and peace, peace as well. They love to promote peace. That is what we are doing too. So for Pakistan, w- because you know as I've already mentioned just a while ago, as a nation, we are lazy people. I mean, every other morning to be honest, until and unless I've had my coffee, I lack motivation. I don't even feel like waking up people or going to work. People don't trust Pakistanis. They think we have shortcuts. Non Arabics, they don't even trust Arabics. Like they like for example a brand Levi's. Okay, okay. People go dying over there. They rush over there mm. because they trust on Americans. They are they are hard working people. Chinese are mm. hard working people. Pakistanis just find shortcuts. But I hope that finishes. But you know what, uh, Iman? I'm actually really. We are lazy people, yes. But our production yes. capacity is actually immense. Yes. Since you've mentioned Levi's just before you came on the show, we were discussing how Pakistani shoes are even being copied in the West. I mean, some amazing popular designers are even copying our designs. Um, there's a brand so, I don't know. Yes. Um, It's written over here. I don't remember. Okay, okay. But that is being copied in every single country. Yes, exactly. So Pakistan is actually, you know, we also produce the largest amount of footballs over here in Sialkot in Pakistan, and Last we provide it to the, everyone around the world. For the World Cup, Pakistan made the football. Absolutely right. So can we have a song in Spanish right now? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Come and move that in my direction. So thankful for that. It's such a blessing. Yeah, turn every situation into heaven. Yeah. Oh, oh. Got me feeling some kind of way. Make me wanna savor every moment slowly, slowly. You make me tell me love how you put it on. Got the only key and how to turn it on. The way you never on my eighty on the words I wanna hear. Baby, take it so slow we can last slow too. Tu eres el imán y yo soy el metal. Me verás el cangal voy a armar un plan. Solo comenzarlo se hace el impulso. 
oh yeah, ya, yeah. ya me estoy gustando una tela normal, no sentí sentido conmigo en domar, es para temarle sin ningún apuro, despacito, es quiero respirarte que no despacito, te haré que diga cosas al oído, para que ni por decir me estés conmigo, despacito, quiero respirarte que no despacito, firme las perenguitas en el laberito, y hasta leer tu puerto todo un manuscrito. Quiero te volar tu gelo cero de tu ritmo, que la cenas a mi boca, flugaré favorito, pamerito, pamerito, baby, y que me nube tu sato sobre este peligro, hasta provocar tus gritos, y que no eres averido, despacito. Wow, brilliant, Iman. Do you also understand a bit of it? Because until and unless you don't get just the basic words, you can't be so fluent, yes. but you are. So you I'm do get it. Spanish. I have learned Spanish. You actually. learning Spanish as well? Wow, that is brilliant. So Hasnain, I mentioned when I was introducing you that you have a job, right? I mean, you do have, as an RJ, you have a government job. So how does that work for you? I mean, isn't it sort of hard to wake up and then go to work and then go to school as well? Do the things by your heart. You do the things for hard work. You do for to become a super kid. You okay. have to do these all things. Right, right. That is absolutely true. There's a lot of hard work that you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, to, to become a super kid. Thank you so much, you amazing kids, for being here on my show early in the morning. All of you are absolutely amazing. Do come to my show next time as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now we're headed out to a short break. When we come back, we'll have something else to talk about. Stay tuned. Good morning. Pakistan, the toll is used to make public announcements after gathering people by beating it repeatedly. Goga sign has become a symbol, a living symbol of the city of Lahore.
Welcome back to Well This Morning with Shiza Hashmi, ladies and gentlemen, and such an amazing and pleasant morning, which I'm pretty sure I made even better for you because of my first segment. We had some amazing super kids over here. So right now we have someone else who's going to speak about how Pakistan can improve bilateral trade with other countries, especially Australia, because this incumbent government, PTI, is focusing on, you know, creating a conducive environment for businesses and investment in Pakistan, also making ease of business for people, you know, foreigners to come in Pakistan and add to the economy and also uh, this government is engaged in the diaspora of Pakistan, who happens to be the sixth largest in the world. They, you know, add to the economy by sending remittances and whatnot. So this is what we are discussing on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen. We've been joined by Mr. Parvez Ash Madraswala, who happens to be the chairman of PABA, Pakistan Australia Business Forum. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Welcome to the show. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so, sir, for so let's start the conversation. For a layman like me, you have to explain what PABA is. Yeah. <laughs> PABF, Pakistan Australia Business Forum, yeah. is a bilateral business forum. Hmm. And uh, it's, uh, we have about 68 members. Okay. And we invite members, uh, those who are doing business with Australia. Right. And those business people who wanted to do start business with Australia. Okay. And that from is Pakistan. Like from Pakistan. Okay. Or, or maybe, you know, some people who wanted to start uh, looking at Pakistan as an investment opportunity okay. so they can become members of PABF. Hmm. So, so far we have about 68 members and we try to keep those membership uh, very, very much close. We hmm. just don't want to open our membership to everyone right, because right. we wanted to contain the membership, those who are seriously wanted to do business with Australia. So it's really it's exclusive. Very okay. exclusive, yeah. So, uh, first of all, I must say that, that um, our membership hmm. is basically limited to Australian businessmen and people from Pakistan who wanted to explore opportunity doing business in Australia okay. and expand their export opportunity to Australian market. Right. So, so far we have achieved. We have, uh, when we started this about uh, five, five years ago, six years ago. Okay. Australian trade between Pakistan and Australia was very low at that time. Uh, obviously, at the moment, uh, the business in favor of Australia, about $650 million we do wow. business. $450 million in favor of Australia okay. and $220 million in favor of Pakistan. Pakistan so right. still we are behind hmm. Australia. So we wanted to increase our export to Australian market. And how we can increase Australia export yeah. to Australia? <clears throat> we wanted to bring technology from Australia. Right, right. Technology absolutely. from Australia for dairy products, hmm. so we can increase our dairy output. Right. We wanted to bring technology for our agriculture base, so we can increase the agriculture output here in Pakistan. Well. So because we are an agrarian society, right? So a lot of a huge percentage of Pakistani people, especially people living in the rural areas, happen to be farmers, right? And because of the technology, let's say that they have and the resources, very limited ones they're not able to produce the amount that they really should. So now we are looking forward to Australia to import the technology, right? So what is the future of this? I mean, what are we looking at in terms of productivity? See, we have done a couple of programs here already, and we do every year about four or five different programs, okay. and we bring Australian expert here in Pakistan with the help of Austrade, Australian Trade Development uh, Association, hmm. and uh, the High Commission of Pakistan, Australia. Australia, and, yes. You know, so we bring Australian expert here and we do different programs here. We invite all the stakeholders, all the dairy farmers, hmm. all the people from different industries, you know, okay. who engage in dairy. So we bring them on board. Hmm. We do a roundtable conference. We bring the speaker from Australia. We share the problems what Pakistani dairy producer hmm. they face, you know, in their daily productions. And we try to give them uh, the, the solutions, you know, okay. that how they can increase the output hmm. and what Australia can help, what technology can Australia offer. Right. So this is how we're trying to bring the gap, you know, hmm. so that they can increase their output. You know, Australian cows are here, yes. but sometimes, you know, those cows, when they are in Australia, they give uh, better output than Pakistan. Right. So, Why so? Yeah, because of uh, environment, the hmm. climate, you know, and the feed. So okay. we just wanted to help them to produce the same kind of feed here because the, uh, the environment is almost same, okay. you know. Uh, as Australia and Pakistan. Okay. So we wanted to uh, uh, to grow the same kind of a feed here. Mm. So we wanted to engage the farmer, we wanted to engage the dairy, mm. uh, dairy farmers and uh, those people who are bringing Australian cows here right. and they are milking those cows okay. here and eventually they produce the milk mm. and they sell that milk, you know, to the big uh, companies, you know, mm. who distribute eventually. And we wanted to, uh, to 
give them an opportunity to value add the dairy product, you know, okay. because we need uh, cheese, we need butter, we need value addition, you right, know, that we is need what milk I was powder. So without all mm. these value addition, we are just drinking the milk, you know, without right. producing the value addition. Exactly. Value addition is a product where we can increase our revenue. Mm. Okay, and the people of Pakistan, they need more calcium, more value addition. Most definitely yeah. so. <laughs> Most so definitely. far what we are doing, you know, we are bringing milk, uh, we are bringing uh, butter and cheese and everything from overseas. And right. that's how our import bills uh, is increasing. So we wanted to, you know, bring that technology here. We wanted to give that a skill to the people yes, of Pakistan right. so that we can produce our own butter or own best quality cheese, cheese here in Pakistan. You know, this is what I was so less to burden on our, on our import bill. Right, absolutely. And since we are talking about cheese, you know, I'm not really sure about the exact figures. I read this just last week when I was preparing for my exams. A huge amount of cheese we do import because there are only two brands in Pakistan that I can name right now, which I won't, mm -hmm. who you know produce cheese for Pakistanis over here, which is not even on such a large scale. But we have an amazing amount of dairy products over here. We have huge amount of kettle over here as well and farmers working on them. Why cannot we produce the same amount of cheese and even export? Why do we even have to look abroad to, you know, get cheese? Yeah. This is a good question. Right. See, what we do, we just consume milk as it is. Hmm. You know, hmm. We just don't focus on, uh, you know, on producing byproducts of milk, you know. Okay. Byproducts of milk, like you said, cheese, butter, and, you know, the, the powdered milk, you yes. know. So, so if we do this, you know, we, we see a good opportunity to export. If we produce a best quality cheese here, best quality butter, right. and the milk powder, we can always export. There are so much opportunity w uh, in the Gulf market, you know, yes, where we can export. Uh, export. Pakistan is the fifth largest producer of dairy milk here in, in the world. Wow. You know? So if we are the fifth largest dairy producer of milk, hmm. why, you know, can't we why, don't <laughs> yeah, why, why can't we produce the best quality cheese Absolutely. and uh, butter, butter and export that excessive quantity to our neighboring countries? countries. Our neighboring countries is full of uh, those people who enjoy cheese. You know, if right. you go to any Arab country, hmm. they like cheese, they like butter. And right. we are just uh, not focusing on that market. So if we produce that here, hmm. there is plenty of opportunity that we can export. And we can export also to Australian market because yes, Australian absolutely. market they are the big big consumer of cheese right, and butter true. so that's how we can just uh, uh, bring more uh, revenue to our uh, country you mm. know and we can increase our export yeah. right thank you so much I'm so sorry we're short on time but this no was worries. really informative a very quick session Mr. Mazraswala uh, so he informed us about how we can increase our exports uh, you know with Australia the bilateral ties especially trade ties how they can be improved so if you learned anything please write us on a Facebook page with the name of well this morning we are on Twitter. We were this morning without a G. Daily Motion on YouTube also well this morning. And if you've missed this, it's okay. You can catch the repeat at 5 past 11 p.m. tonight. Till the next time, take care. Good morning.